Hello everyone, welcome to Analog IAS Prelims High Yielding Series for Prelims 2020. And today's science and technology topic is the frequency bands of communication satellites. So, to be useful, satellites and spacecrafts must communicate, sometimes relay communication between two points and sometimes they have to transmit data. Although there have been some experiments in optical communication using lasers, most of the satellite communication is accomplished by radio waves. It is one part of the electromagnetic spectrum. Now what are radio frequencies, what is electromagnetic spectrum, let us have a brief look. So these are the various components of the electromagnetic spectrum and most of the light that we see today is because of the wavelength of lights in visible spectrum. The kind of frequency for the energy seen in this part of the electromagnetic spectrum is between 400 terahertz and 900 terahertz. However, the key takeaway here is the fact that most of the communication that happens between satellites is in the radio frequency range only. That is the key takeaway from this electromagnetic spectrum chart. So, when we are talking about various frequency bands, we will be talking about certain bands like say S band, C band, Q band, K band. So, what are these bands? So, these are nothing but those frequency ranges within the radio waves at which a particular satellite functions. For example, you have the Q band which functions between 12 to 18 gigahertz. Similarly, we have the K band which functions between 27 to 40 gigahertz. So, basically what we are talking about is the frequency bands within which this particular communication satellites will function. Now with respect to C band, you don't have to remember the exact frequency, the number does not matter. What you have to remember is C band is the kind of band that is basically used for our phone calls. Secondly, the most important point that you have to remember here is when we are talking about radio frequency, within the electromagnetic spectrum, radio has the least amount of energy. X-rays and gamma rays have the highest amount of energy. So naturally, radio waves have the least frequency and X-rays and gamma rays have high frequency. Again, I am repeating, for all the communication, we will be using frequencies within the radio range itself. And within that radio range, C range or C band, as it is called, is the weakest. So, in order to capture the signal of that weak radio signal, we will be using large ground antennas. It provides lower transmission power over wide geographic areas. So, whenever you want to cover a large area, obviously you will have to compromise on something and within the C band, you will have wide geographic cover but poor audio quality. The second frequency that we will be using is the Q band between 12 to 18 gigahertz. This is much more powerful or much more energetic than the C band and it will be used by our direct to home operators or operators like Tata Sky, Videocon etc. So this can also be used in tele education applications. In the context of COVID-19 we have had various uh, institutions trying to impart education through online services. So the kind of frequency that these institutions are using are within the range of Q-band. The next point is about the antenna size. Since Q-band is much more energetic than the C-band, we will be having more quality. Therefore, therefore, the antenna sizes of these particular receivers will be much more smaller than the C-band antennas. Now we have arrived at one of the most important point, the K-band which is very relevant for our Digital India ambitions. Today we are talking about internet penetration, we are talking about 5G, artificial intelligence and for all that, internet connectivity forms the basis. So like I have told you, after C band, Q band, it is the K band that is of very much relevance for our Digital India ambitions because it is much more energetic. It has a higher frequency. Like I have already said, you don't have to remember the exact frequency range but it would be better if you can. If you can't remember, at least remember that C band is less powerful than the Q band and Q band is less powerful than the K band. 
so the most significant technological development will happen in the carbon and if you go by initial results that progress has already begun so the cab band is primarily used for two way consumer broadband our high speed internet facilities are possible because of satellites being put in cab band and even military networks for communication even in areas with poor connectivity is because of this cab band only however there is also one problem this cab band has higher frequencies so a lot of signal quality problems can be caused because of weather phenomenon like rains that is the only issue that we have with cab band otherwise it has a lot of potential now with respect to gsat 11 a satellite launched last year let us have a look at this question which among the following statements is false with respect to gsat 11 that is the question so gsat 11 is the heaviest satellite built by isro this statement is right it was launched from french guiana by arian v rocket of arian space so this statement is also right now let me give you a brief background about why we did not use gslv gslv is the launch vehicle that is used for heavier satellites now the weight of this particular satellite was more than 5000 kg much beyond the range of gslv which carries nearly 4000 or 4 tons of uh, payload to the geosynchronous orbit or geostationary orbit so since we don't have the capability to use gslv for this kind of satellites we use the french guiana rocket another important development with respect to gsat 11 was for the first time car band was used in this satellite so this was meant for military communication as well as ensuring that high speed internet to the range of 16 gbps was available for digital india services now look take a look at the last option it is launched in low earth orbit as you have seen in the previous videos in our high yielding series no communication satellite which has such high utility will be placed in low earth orbit because that would impede on its ability to communicate on a larger geographical area so the farther it is away from the earth the better it is so it is not launched in the low earth orbit but it is launched in the geosynchronous orbit or geostationary orbit that is the right answer now with respect to question number 2 i want you guys to pause this video have a look at this question and comment your answer along with an explanation in the comment box below that's it for this video Thank you for watching